All right. Um, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So, um, okay. Thank you very much for letting me know, Elizabeth. Thank you for, uh, you know, that message from the beginning. And uh, yeah, hope you can get home safely. Okay, so as I was saying, good evening and welcome to um, basically the last class for this week. So I hope you guys are doing great. And I hope that, you know, we are ready um, to continue talking about, uh, well, the many important topics that we're covering and also... Well, we're also going to be covering tonight um, simple ways in which we can improve our health. And moving a little bit away from the topic of health, we're also going to be talking about the different things that can be um, around us in our cities. So um, this is more about, you know, common places or common things that we can find in a city. And uh, if you guys have any doubts regarding that like regarding places or locations in cities we might also get to discuss that tonight you know to add um extra information or more vocabulary that of course is very important um as it also has become hopefully um something you know already known by you Tonight, the question is going to be relatively simple. Um, so the practice for tonight is not going to be that hard for you guys, I hope, because it's a question you guys already know. Um, therefore, we're going to be um, talking about that uh, specific thing that we do all ends of weeks. Um, apart from that, as I was saying earlier, I would like to hear from you and from your um from your common activities when it comes to health, what are the things that you do when you guys want to do something healthy, you know, for yourself. But the question that I was mentioning is simple. It's very straightforward. It's well known. It's, do you have any plans for the weekend? So that's what we're going to be covering tonight. And, or at least that was what we're going to be practicing tonight. And um, I would like to start by hearing from... Let's see if we can hear from Jonathan. So in your case, Jonathan, do you have any plans for this coming weekend? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, because it's, it's a birthday when my is, but sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, you're okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have plan for this weekend because my girlfriend, uh, his birthday. birthday yeah and go out uh, with my family uh a taco mm. yeah nice that sounds fun yeah that sounds fun great so are you taking your girlfriend with you on that trip so sorry uh i can hear very well are you taking your girlfriend with you on that trip to a taco yeah 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 oh yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so nice. I hope you guys have, you know, a fun weekend and you can make her feel special during this um these few days. Okay, so thank you. Good luck with that. Good luck. Okay, okay. um how about we now hear from Diego? In your case, Diego, do you have any plans for this coming weekend? Okay, seems like Diego is not around right now. Um, how about we hear from Rebecca? So, in your case, Rebecca, do you happen to have any any special plans coming up this weekend? Hello, good evening. Evening. And uh, yes, um, this Saturday, I have a birthday dinner mm. for one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. We are going to go to Sucre in San Benito. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds nice. Um, and uh, do you have another plans or any plans for Sunday? Uh, no, for Sunday I don't have uh, any plans. Okay, great. I, but uh, only uh, rest. Okay, so many birthdays I can detect from now, and it sounds you know like it's gonna be a fun time as well. Um, hopefully, as as I said before. With Jonathan, you guys can spend some uh some 
quality time and also enjoy your day or you know or the while that you're going to spend with your uh, with your friend so yeah hopefully also the environment at the restaurant is the best the most appropriate so good luck okay thank you all right how about we now hear from um, Athenas in your case Athenas do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend good evening teacher good evening uh, uh, the Saturday, uh, go to the work, mm -hmm. and the Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, I celebrate husband's uh, birthday in, uh, I go to the beach. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds very fun. Um, do you guys have any specific beach where you want to go or do you just go to anywhere? Um, my husband birthday is um, 15 uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, June 15th. I think it's going to be on Thursday. But uh, but you celebrated before, he, huh? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. But he and, and me mm -hmm. uh, go to the work uh, yeah, on, on all the weekend. Mm -hmm. And okay. I celebrate in Sunday. Okay, great. Yeah, it's. I mean, sometimes it's better, you know, to celebrate before than celebrating after. Exactly. Sí, es mejor, mejor celebrar antes y no después. So nice. Yeah, that sounds like a fun time as well. You know, going to the beach, spending some time um, with your loved one. And uh, as I said before, I hope you have an amazing time and um, make him feel special in this occasion. So, yeah, great. Very good. And uh, moving on. How about we hear from, um, let's see, Abigail. In your case, Abigail, do you happen to have any specific or special plans for this coming weekend? Hello, good evening, teacher. Evening. And I go to the church because uh, we have event mm -hmm. in the church. Uh, the ambos días, Sunday both days. and oh. so the whole the whole weekend. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, um, eso ahorita que les iba a enviar esta palabra, ¿verdad? Cuando hablamos acerca de, por ejemplo, en este caso, podríamos decir both days, sí, both days, que sería para hablar acerca de ambos, o sea, both days, o si no, podríamos también utilizar la frase que yo mencioné, the whole weekend, sí, the whole weekend. Me recordé que anteriormente también cuando tenías mencionó lo de que ella y su esposo iban a hacer algo, eh, a ver, podemos decir him and I, Susana and I. Sí, no es eh, como necesario decir mi, ¿verdad? Um, el mi, el detalle es que eh, lo utilizamos mayormente cuando nos colocamos a nosotros en una situación o en una posición de objeto, ¿sí? De una, um, de una oración. Ejemplo específico. Por ejemplo, si yo dijese... He told me, sí, he told me to do this and that. Cualquier cosa que me haya dicho él. Entonces, significa que yo no necesariamente participé en esa acción, sino que yo fui un receptor de esa acción. Entonces, yo digo, he told me, sí, es él, me dijo. Um, he invited me, entonces yo estoy utilizando el me simplemente para ponerme en esa posición, ¿verdad? Como el receptor de una acción que alguien más realizó. So he invited me, sería él me invitó. Entonces, cuando nosotros sí tenemos parte en la acción, sí vamos a ser activos en esa, en esa acción, es mejor que digamos, um, digamos en este caso sería him and I, ¿sí? Him and I, que significa él y yo. Him and I will go. Entonces, si decimos him and me, mm, Podría que alguien, ¿verdad? No lo, no lo note o no lo, no lo vea como algo tan extraño, eh, pero es mejor que dijésemos de esa forma, him and I. Sé que es raro, no es algo que se escuche tan comúnmente, 
pero es mejor, ¿verdad? Es, la, la cosa es que aquí lo que hacemos es evitar caer en el error de lo que mencionamos en, ingle, en español, perdón, eh, muy a menudo, el burro por delante, en lugar de decir, um, de decir, ¿verdad? Me and my husband. En ese caso, suena también el, el decir, el me and my husband, es por lo mismo, o sea, que ustedes se mencionan a ustedes primero, no dicen I am my husband, in my husband para evitar ese mismo suceso. Ustedes mejor colocan su, su participación en una acción como un objeto. O sea, ustedes se colocan a sí mismos, ¿verdad? Como un objeto en esto, para no necesariamente eh, ser los primeros, como el punto focal de aquella acción. Entonces, eh, cuando utilizamos el mi, va a ser para... Más que todo funcionar como objeto o receptor de una acción. Y cuando utilizamos el I es cuando nosotros sí participamos, ¿verdad? En aquella acción. Entonces, acá, por ejemplo, este him podría ser reemplazado por, qué sé yo, podríamos decir um, Susana and I, ¿sí? Susana and I like to have ice cream. Es un ejemplo, ¿verdad? A Susana y a mí nos gusta comer helado. Eso podría ser lo que digamos eh, en español, sí, Susana and I. Podríamos utilizar eh, dos nombres, sí, podríamos decir, digamos, um, Miguel, Juan and I, Miguel, Juan and I. Entonces, y luego pues agregamos, claro, el, el, el complemento, la oración que va a ser parte de, pues, de la explicación que estamos queriendo dar, ¿verdad? Podríamos decir, Miguel, Miguel Juan and I, are going to the circus tonight. Un ejemplo. Miguel, Juan and I are going to the circus. Entonces, Miguel, Juan y yo vamos a ir al circo esta noche. Um, entonces, eso, ¿verdad? Importante recordarlo. Cuando somos parte de la, de la acción, decimos en I. Bueno, continuando. Oh, lo otro que les decía o les dejaba por acá era lo del both days and the whole. Cuando decimos the whole, es más que todo cuando estamos tratando de hablar acerca de lo completo de algo. O sea, por ejemplo, si alguien estuvo enfermo toda la semana, yo puedo decir, he was sick the whole week. Sí, he was sick the whole week. Si, por ejemplo, alguien se comiese, compramos un pollo rostizado y alguien se lo comiera todito. Entonces podríamos decir, he ate the whole chicken. He ate the whole chicken. Se comió todo el pollo. Eh, cuando hablamos entonces de algo completo, o sea, una descripción de algo que fue completamente todo, utilizamos whole, ¿sí? Um, también se puede utilizar la palabra whole cuando queremos describir un sentimiento. Si, por ejemplo, en algún sentido o en algún momento ustedes llegan a sentirse completos, llegan a sentirse eh, como que no nos hace falta nada, ¿sí? Pueden utilizar esa palabra. Se usa mucho en cuestiones románticas. Por ejemplo, si yo le quiero decir a alguien, ¿verdad? Como tú me complementas. Um, yo puedo, diría en ese caso you make me whole ¿sí? o you make me feel whole me hace sentir completo o me, ha, o me complementas el utilizar all también se puede ¿sí? también se puede utilizar all el detalle es que all viene eh, o se va a usar cuando estamos hablando de cosas contables mayormente cuando estamos hablando por ejemplo si yo digo all week you haven't been here all week es como que no has estado aquí toda la semana. La semana sabemos que se divide normalmente cuando hablamos de este tipo de semanas, semanas laborales, ¿verdad? Entonces sería una semana con cinco días normalmente. Son cada uno de esos días cuenta, ¿verdad? Entonces decimos all, estamos contando cada uno de esos días. En cambio, cuando decimos whole, estamos tomando la semana como, o sea, como una sola unidad. Si no estamos eh, mencionando por separado cada uno de los días. Es la diferencia que tiene. Um, por ejemplo, si en el caso que hay un, que, digamos, tres gelatinas. Si sí, había tres gelatinas, antes les dije, ¿verdad? Que alguien se comía todo un pollo. Ustedes dicen, he ate the whole chicken. Sí, pero si hay tres gelatinas, ya no tenemos solamente una gelatina entera, sino que tenemos tres. Así que ahí no vamos a usar whole. No, o sea, no voy a decir, ¿verdad? He ate whole gelatines or whole jellies. Sino que en este caso, eh, vamos a decir, he ate all the jellies, ¿sí? Se comió todas las gelatinas. No la, com la gelatina completa, sino todas. Porque estamos hablando ya de tres. Entonces, all se utiliza con eh, 
contables que son plurales mayormente y whole es para poder referirnos a algo como una unidad, o sea, como singular y pues en el caso de hacerlo con la semana es por eso, ¿verdad? porque la semana pues tiene cierto divisiones que son, o subdivisiones que son los días, pero podemos hablar de la semana como un ente completo. Entonces, es la diferencia que va a existir entre all y whole. Bueno, um, seguimos. How about we hear now from Connie? In your case, Connie, do you have any plans for this coming weekend? Good evening, teacher. But, Good evening. Uh, I'll only see the movie with my, my family. Okay, yeah, great. I mean, spending time with family is always a good idea, you know, for the weekend. Um, so yeah, hopefully, um, I mean, as well, you can find something fun to do with them during, you know, the few days that you're going to have for a weekend. So yeah, well, um, moving on. How about we hear now from Susana? In your case, Susana, do you have any special plans for this coming weekend? Mm -hmm. I had a bakery sh shop. I had a... Heridos, ¿cómo se dice? Heridos. Mm -hmm. Heridos sería wounded. Wounded. Um, <laughs> I, I wounded uh, the... Um, Um, no sé cómo decir que tengo una fiesta y que voy a preparar postres para, para ese día. Oh, pedidos, dijo. Sí. Pedi ah, yo escuché heridos. Perdón, yo escuché heridos. Uh -huh. <risa> pedidos. Ah, pedidos en ese caso serían orders. Orders. Ah, orders. Uh -huh. orders. Ok. Sí. Um, this week uh, I had... Uh, 50, mm -hmm. uh, 50 years, <laughs> uh, party, 50 mm -hmm. years party, I had a desserts uh, table, mm -hmm. um, I had, um, I do uh, cookies, no, decorate cookies, en alfajores, got cake, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. I mean, you provided a great explanation, so very good, great. So hopefully everything is going to work, you know, smoothly um, with your party or the party that you have to cover. En este caso, perdona, yo, yo escuché heridos. O sea, yo dije, ¿qué? ¿Será que es enfermera? O sea, no sé. Entonces, el, el, escuché heridos y dije, ah, heridos es wounded. Conste, por un momento se me, se, se, me, se me pasó por la mente que era pedidos. Sí, porque por un momento dije, o sea, seguramente dijo, dijo pedidos, pero yo escuché mal. Pero luego fue como que pregunté y usted dijo, sí. Entonces, por eso me quedé con, ah, wounded, bueno. Pero no, bueno, aquí entonces en este caso, la palabra wounded... Um, se usa para describir a alguien que está herido, o también hablar acerca de varias personas que están heridas, ¿sí? Um, y, por ejemplo, acá les dejaba también injured, que esta es otra forma en la que podríamos hablar eh, o decir que alguien está, está herido. Injured, más que todo, es como lastimado. O sea, como si alguien ha sido, um, como si sufrió, qué sé yo, algún accidente, entonces está lastimado. Wounded es mucho más eh, dado hacia las heridas como profunda, ¿verdad? O sea, como una herida visible, digamos. Alguien que está wounded es como alguien que se cortó, alguien que pueda que tenga moretones, pero más que todo cortes, palazos, cosas así, eh, es un wounded, ¿sí? En cambio, injured, por ejemplo, eh, si ustedes se golpean el dedo meñique, de verdad, o el chiquito de, de, de su pie, ya ahí ustedes están injured. ¿sí? Ya, yo sé que les ha pasado en algún momento, entonces eso, o sea, ese dolor, ya eso es injured, ¿sí? Um, o cualquier, bueno, incluso con heridas amorosas eh, se puede utilizar, ¿verdad? La palabra injured, ¿sí? I, you have injured my heart. Como has, has eh, lastimado mi corazón. Entonces, injured. Injured, damage también, pero damage es diferente. O sea, damage es más como... Eh, 
como hacer daño de forma consciente, por decirlo así. Pero bueno, injured and wounded. Y luego orders, pues bueno, esa es la palabra que necesitábamos saber, que era pues pedidos, para pedidos, orders. Muy bien. Mm, and the last person that we're going to hear from tonight, I think is going to be Mercedes. So, Mercedes, in your case, do you happen to have any special plans coming up this weekend? Um, bueno, si no me equivoco en entenderle mal, este, los planes que tengo para el fin de semana. Yep, yep, yep. I, I will visit my mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got to the market. Oh, okay. Great. So nice. Uh, you'll visit your parents and you also go to the market. So that sounds like a plan, you know, uh, going for a quick visit to your parents' house or um, just to go see your parents and also do, I think, I am assuming that you'll also do groceries. So That seems great, you know. That seems to um to be part of a of a nice weekend plan. All right. So now we're going to get to work on ten simple ways to improve your health. Um, what I want you guys to think about while we do this is think about which of these do you guys do. Sí, cuáles de estas son algunas de las cosas, verdad? O las o las um actividades que nosotros también podemos llegar a practicar. Más adelante vamos a tener una pequeña práctica con esto y por ahora pues vamos a estar viendo eh, which are those 10 simple ways in which you can improve your health. So, believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in 10 simple ways. Now, the first one is eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. There are some people And I think I did it for a couple weeks uh, a few years ago. But there are some people who don't like to have breakfast. Sometimes it's because they don't want to. And sometimes it's because uh, they cannot. Because, um, of course, we know that adulthood is not easy. And that we have to work and we have to get to places, be places. Um, so sometimes it's hard. Sometimes people don't have the time. Um to make break breakfast and also to sit down a little bit and also, well, eat that breakfast. But it is one of the biggest advices, you know, go ahead and eat breakfast. Now, the, and the second one is go for a walk. Walking is good exercise and exercise is necessary for good health. So some people say that it's not necessarily required to work out or to exercise. But um, many others, and I would say experts included, agree on the fact that um, for us to be healthy, for us to have, um, well, the best possible life, we do have to exercise or to do at least, at least you know, some kind of motion, some kind of activity. Um, so, yeah, walking, as it's easy to do, and basically we all do it, it is one of the biggest advices to go ahead and just go for a walk. The reason why it's important to mention this as well is because many people, they drive to work and they are, you know, sitting in their cars for most of the day and they do not do any kind of exercise, any kind of workout. So it's advisable mostly for those kinds of people, for the kind of people that spend the whole day sitting down. So if you are one of those, if you have to work like at an office and you don't get up too often, sorry, going for a little walk can help you into becoming, you know, a more healthy version of yourself. Now, the third one, floss your teeth. All right. So don't use brush them. Flossing keeps your gums healthy. All right, so uh, flossing or flossing teeth is basically using el tan conocido hilo dental, que en inglés se dice dental floss. Entonces, flossing your teeth. Um, so flossing your teeth is one of the, you know, one advice that um, can 
what are you supposed to help you on staying well more healthy as they suppose that um you know that this is of course uh dental floss so it is supposed to be more beneficial because it takes away some of the dirt that the brush itself is not capable of getting away when you brush your teeth so flossing your teeth is also going to be an advice you can consider into turning your life in a better direction all right moving on we have drink eight cups of water every day drink eight cups of water every day water helps you supply helps your body um in many ways as you guys might already know we humans are supposed to be built up by a huge amount of water like our bodies are not only well meat and bone we are a lot a lot of liquid so we are or we contain a lot of water in our bodies therefore water is beneficial or it's going to be beneficial to many of our body functions as well so drink at least eight cups of water every day and this is going to help you improve your health as well next one up stretch for five minutes stretching is important for your muscles so this is also something that many people don't do I can count myself into the people that do not do this um, because, well, I do work out, but it's weird because I almost never stretch, you know, before or after I do any kind of workout. I do a stretch from time to time just for fun, just because I just feel like, you know, doing or having some body um, body up uh, action, but it's not like I am the kind of person that is going to be stretching as we are supposed to do um so yeah in my case i am not one of those people okay then uh, um wear a seat belt wear a seat belt so every uh every year seat belts save thousands of lives so this is not necessarily going to affect your life or your health directly but in you know the immune or i mean in the possibility of you getting into an accident if you're wearing your seatbelt you have a, a huge percentage of advantages and you have more probabilities of getting away from that accident alive but if you are what the kind of people that doesn't like to wear a seatbelt well you might just wind up you know suffering heart injuries and well the inevitable can end up happening, which means, of course, you can end up, um, well, losing your life. So wearing a seatbelt is something that is going to keep you safe in certain ways. And it's also going to help you. Some people say that when they are driving, it is something very stressful, you know, it, or for them, at least it is very stressful. So it means that um, wearing a seatbelt is going to take away a little bit of the stress and you're gonna help uh, your body to stay more relaxed because you feel safer when you're wearing a seatbelt. Okay, next one up, do something to challenge your brain. Do something to challenge your brain. So for example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new, uh, a new book. So brain activity, it is not a surprise for anyone, but brain activity is key to, well, having a healthy life to spending some quality time with yourself. So having activities on storage for you to go ahead and practice them when you feel like, you know, you have some spare time, you have, uh, um, I don't know, you're bored out of the routine. So you can take some time out of your day to do something great, you know, to do something that is going to challenge your brain. And at the end, you're going to feel the benefits of like keeping your brain awake because, of course, this is going to help you with memory issues. This is going to help you with creativity. And uh, it will always, of course, in you know a different realm, it will always um, uh, as well provide you with an option of uh, like a conversation, like a topic that you can pick to establish conversations. All right, next one up. Protect your skin. Use lots of, uh, use lots of moisturizer 
and sunscreen. So another of the activities that is or are very important for us here in our countries, because we already know that the sun hits very, very hard here in, in America, or at least in the region where we live. Therefore, taking good care of your skin is going to help you, um, well, protect it from the UV light and also having less um, issues with your health. So protect your skin, be careful uh, when you're, for example, mostly when you're going to be at the sun. So try to stay hydrated and also keep your skin hydrated. All right, get enough calcium. Esa sería otra, get enough calcium. So your bones need, uh, sorry, your bones need it. Dairy food like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. So in this one, we even have some examples of things that we can consume just so that we can get, you know, to acquire the required amount of calcium for us to stay healthy. So they say that um, yogurt, milk, cheese are great options if you feel like, you know, getting some calcium into you. All right, next one up is take a time out uh, or a break of about 20 minutes. Cuando hablamos de los timeouts, pues estamos hablando acerca de tiempos fuera, ¿verdad? Tiempos en los que eh, nos detenemos de hacer cualquier situación o cualquier cosa que estábamos haciendo previamente. Now, do something different. For example, get up and walk or sit down and listen to music. So, doing something apart from the regular is also going to help you stay well, not necessarily focus all the time, but to stay awake, to stay alive, to do different things. So taking a break, uh, a timeout is, of course, beneficial to you. Um, it depends on how much time you have or maybe on where you live, where you work for you to take these timeouts. But when you take a timeout, normally what you do is just like, If something stresses you or if something feels like too monotonous, you can simply step away from that and just, you know, take some time to think about it. Maybe take some time to just, um, I don't know, dedicate it to something different. Así que ahí tenemos, ¿verdad? Esas son entonces 10 formas, ¿sí? En las que podemos mantenernos más saludables. Ahora, la práctica que vamos a tener es la siguiente. Yo les voy a preguntar a ustedes, ¿sí? Una, o sea, les voy a preguntar a una nada más, a una persona, ¿cuál de esas actividades es la que más realiza? O sea, de las siete, de las, perdón, de las diez actividades aconsejadas, ¿verdad? Para mantenerse eh, saludable, les voy a preguntar cuál es la que más realiza. Y luego, ustedes vamos a generar una especie de cadena en la cual ustedes van a ir preguntando a sus compañeros. Sí, la pregunta será bastante sencilla. Vamos a ver, aquí les voy a dejar la pregunta en el chat. Which of these activities? Um, sorry, activities do you do the most? Sí. Which of these activities do you do the most? ¿Cuál de esas actividades practicas más? O sea, ¿cuál es la que más a menudo eh, hace sentir, ¿verdad?, que está teniendo quizá beneficios en ti, o que quizás por el estilo de vida que puedas tener eh, sea, el sea, perdón, la actividad que practiques con mayor frecuencia. Entonces, así va a funcionar. Yo le pregunto a una persona ahorita, a uno de, de todos los participantes, y luego ustedes eligen a quién le preguntan y le van a preguntar eso que les envié por el chat. Which of these activities do you do the most? ¿Cuál de estas actividades es la que realizas más? Y pues luego ya ustedes deberán tener, ¿verdad? La obligación, pues de decir, oh, I practice the most y leen cuál es la que ustedes hacen más y traten de dar una pequeña explicación. Eh, lo que quiero es mayormente que no, no haya necesidad de que yo interrumpa en la cadena. Traten ustedes, ¿verdad? De ir seleccionando qué compañero le van a preguntar sin que haya esa necesidad eh, de que alguien más... Bueno, principalmente que yo esté interrumpiendo. Por otro lado, si ustedes preguntan a alguno de los compañeros que no esté presente, esperamos un momento y luego podemos elegir, ¿verdad? Alguien más 
con quien continuar esta práctica. Entonces, the first person that I'm going to be asking tonight, which of the activities do you do the most, is going to be Oscar González. So, Oscar, from the 10 activities we have here, which of these activities do you do the most? I activity more. Uh, I exercise. I exercise in, on weekend. I go home here on uh, the stadium for for thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, and I I I walk. Uh, in the park for for 10 minutes every day. All right, great, very good. Now, I would like to see who is going to be the next person on participating in the activity. ¿Quién vamos a elegir, Oscar? Uh, Blanca Caña. Okay. Ahí usted entonces en el chat tiene la pregunta. Sí, esa sería la pregunta que le vamos a hacer, ¿verdad? Which of these activities do you do the most? Okay. Which of these activities do you do the most? Hi, good evening. Evening. Um, the, the questions. Uh, the activities in the most is the uh, uh, running mm -hmm. or oh, number five, in this mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. stretch for five minutes. So that is your activity. That is the one that you do the most. Great. So very good. Yeah. I mean, running or going for a run sometimes as the same that Oscar mentioned before. It's important because um, you're giving your body, you know, some extra energy or you're also consuming some of the energies that you might have in reserve. So nice. Very nice. Ahora, Blanca. Ah, in the number 10. In the number 10. Oh, you take breakouts as well or timeouts? Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. Esa es una buena práctica. O sea, tomarse un tiempo cuando algo tal vez no está funcionando. Eh, tomarse un, un corto tiempo ¿verdad? pueden ser, en este caso hoy menciona 20 minutos pero yo, yo les decía ¿verdad? o sea que pueden ser, qué sé yo 5 o 10 depende de um, de cómo sea la rutina o el tiempo que tengamos disponible en ese momento entonces pues cada quien tendrá ¿verdad? su versión como mejor le funcione, so nice, very nice ahora, Blanca who are go you going to ask? ¿a quién le vamos a preguntar ahora? Hola, Blanca. Hi. Sorry. It's okay. Having you. Eh, Mercedes, ¿qué pasó? No. Okay. No, todavía no. No. Okay. Okay, so Mercedes, can you please ask the question, Blanca? Uh -huh. Okay, which for these activities do you do the most? All right, so Mercedes, which of these activities do you do the most? Um... Five. Mm -hmm. Stretch for five minutes. Stretching okay. is important for your muscle. All right. Uh, when I do stretching, no sé cómo decir, un día sí, un día no. Ajá, ¿cuál sería su versión? ¿Cómo cree usted que ese día? Ah, que hago el estiramiento un día sí y un día Ajá. no. Sí, en inglés, ¿cómo cree usted que se diga eso? I, I do stretch, es, sí, es, stretching one day. Yes, one day uh, no. One day yes, one day no. Uh -huh. Sería, podría ser eh, day in and day out. Sí, day in and day out. O sea, un día adentro, un día afuera. Eh, suena extraño, pero esa podría ser una forma. Sí, 
uh, day in and day out. Okay. Okay. So um, that sounds nice. You know, that sounds like um, as I said, uh, we of course need to spend some of the energies that we have in our bodies and stretching or doing some sort of workout or exercise if uh we have the time is always going to be um important and beneficial to our bodies so great very very nice now how about we hear from sorry mercedes which one is the person that you want to hear from yeah that's the the thing a quien vamos a preguntar mercedes Herson. Okay. So, Herson, can you please ask the question, Mercedes, for Herson or to Herson? Which of the activities do you the most? All right. So, Herson, let's see. Um. So, Herson, which of these activities is the one or are the ones that you do the most? Okay, seems like Herson might not be able to participate right now. Therefore, we're going to move into hearing from um, Abigail. So, Abigail, in your case, which of these, of these activities do you do, do, do you do the most? Eat breakfast. Uh, my breakfast is very important for me because it uh, helps me to be healthy. Saludable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it keeps you healthy. Very nice. So, yeah, I mean, eating breakfast is always a, a great option and it's easy also. It is very, very easy. Some people say that because of uh, diets, because of, of many reasons that they want to give, they do not necessarily have um, breakfast every day. But eating breakfast is, of course, very, very beneficial to our bodies. So nice. Thank you very much. Now, Abigail, who are we going to ask next? And can you please ask the question to that person? Uh, Connie. Okay, Connie. And the question, please. Which of the activity do you do the most? All right. So, Connie, which of these activities do you do the most? Know, but I think so it's important a uh, drink work or day uh, protect the skin it's important for me hola mm -hmm. sí, sí, sí. okay Um, so yeah, drinking, es que se le escucha medio como si tiene, no sé, el ventilador o algo que le hace que le, como que se, se escucha raro el, el, el sonido. Pero bueno, I was able to catch the fact that you said that drinking water um, every day is, you know, the, 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 the thing that you do or the thing that you consider to do as one of the most important things to do. So once again, as I said earlier, we are built up. And tons and tons of water and of course we need water to survive and to continue with our lives so yeah drinking water is of course a great way of improving our health all right it's so to protect the, the skin is important for me mm -hmm. but avoid the dermatitis or other Or even dryness, you know, regular dryness. Simplemente la resequedad regular, ¿verdad? Que podemos yes. tener. Incluso eso se puede evitar, ¿verdad? Consumiendo agua. Sí, okay, sí. so nice, very nice. Now, Connie, um, who are we going to ask next? And uh, can you please ask the question to that person? Mm -hmm. With uh, Alberto. Okay, Alberto. With all this activity to the most, Alberto. Hi, good evening. evening. The most activity uh, is eat the breakfast because breakfast give energy for the morning and drink 
eight cups of water every day. And mm -hmm. sometimes I stretch for five minutes or ten minutes. Okay, that sounds great. So you do a few things to um to keep yourself, you know, in great shape. So you do eat breakfast, you do um uh, drink water, yes. and you also uh, stretch for some time. So that sounds great. Very, very good. Yeah, nice. Um so um how about the next person? Who do you want to participate next, Albert? Um, yeah, let's see. Elizabeth Sanchez. No sé si Elizabeth ya está disponible, espero que sí. Elizabeth, are you there? Are you ready to be part of the class? I mean, to participate at least. Porque es que hace rato dijo que estaba manejando, así que no sé si está lista. Diego. Okay, maybe yeah, it's a better option to go for Diego. So Diego. Diego Valdez. Mm -hmm. So Diego, in your case, what is which of these activities do you do the most? Please. Um, okay. Um. Um. Just um. Just like Connie. Um. Um. Activity the most is number eight. Protect your skin, <laughs> um, because I don't like the sun and my skin is um sensible, sensitive, mm -hmm. sensitive or delicate, delicate. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, protecting your skin. What do you use, or do you normally just apply lotion, or what are the like the things that you use to protect your skin? Uh, yeah. Um. Lotion or or staying home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is probably the best option to follow. You know, if you don't like the sun, if you don't want to play any risks, just stay home. Just uh, be home, and that's gonna you know help you out with protecting well your skin or protecting anything that you would like to um to take care of. So nice. Uh, yeah. So protecting your skin. Very, very important. Moving on. Diego, who would you like to hear from next? Vamos a tener dos personas más y luego terminamos con esta actividad. So, who would you like to hear from next? And can you please ask the question? Um, okay. Um, um, Jonathan Menjivar, okay. which of these activities do you do the most? Okay. Um... Maybe for me it is um go for a walk because uh when when finish my job uh and before I finish the day I need to go go out of my house uh walk with my dog um ah uh, maybe 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 drink uh, a lot of a lot of water. Because it um, makes me feel happy and healthy every day. It's okay. better. All right. So that's important. That word that you used there, you know, makes you feel happy. That is, you know, the reason why we sometimes do these efforts or try to do these efforts. Because we just want to be happier. We want to feel better. And um, great. Going for a walk. I think walking clears your mind and it helps you in many ways. It helps you physically and also mentally. Because when you walk, um, you know, you're looking at different things on the street or on the park or wherever it is that you go for that walk. But um, you're looking at different things, different perspectives, and that helps you out a lot to just calm down or step aside from, well, the stress of work and now just feel better. So nice. Very nice. Now, Jonathan. Who would you like to be the last person in participating in this activity tonight? I think I think your mic is off. Creo que el micrófono está apagado. There we go. Ah, Susana. Susana okay. 
Yeah, Susana. Uh, uh, which of these activities do you do the most? All right, very good. So, Susana, which of these activities do you do the most? Hello, hello, Susana. Hola, hola, ahora sí. Mm -hmm. I had a practice uh, a weekend, <laughs> frequency, uh, 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 chase a bicycle. Uh, I, I had, no, I had grouped my, uh, I have a group of friends and uh uh como root no que estemos recorridos I I I I love be is relax. I I had relax. No, I. Sí, estamos bien con I love to be relaxed. Sí, o sea, me gusta como relajarme. Uy, creo que Susana se nos congeló. <laughs> Bueno, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I think she went uh blank. Well, let's see if we can continue then. Um so thank you guys for participating in this activity. Now we're going to move into the next one. And here we have, as I said earlier. I relax. Uy, so um, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> <That's sad. laughs> Después de medio minuto se, se, se regresa. Ah, ya se salió. Bueno, ok. <ríe> Cosas que pasan, ¿verdad? Cosas que pasan. So, vocabulary, uh, places and things. Básicamente estos son los lugares más comunes que pueden haber en una comunidad, en una ciudad, en un pueblo. Y, pues bueno, quiero que también ustedes se hagan de pensar en algunos lugares que tal vez no estén acá en esta lista, que o conozcan o quisieran conocer, ¿verdad? Como se dicen. So, we have a bank. Well, very common, very um, useful. And nowadays, I feel like they are basically everywhere. You know, back in the day, I remember when I was younger, um, there was only one bank here in my city. Now, we have like five of them. So, it's it's not a huge city. It's, you know, a, a small city. But we have like five banks and it sometimes it just feels like it's too much. And uh, also the other thing that is interesting to me is the fact that the banks have the best buildings. I know that it's because, of course, they do have tons of earnings. Um, but yeah, banks are very, very common nowadays. Uh, we also have a drugstore. So here we have uh, something so what kind of weird to mention okay when we talk about drugstores because um nowadays it is common to call it a pharmacy but back in the day it was not common okay back in the day like 20 25 years ago it was not that usual it was not that uh heard of you know too common to hear people say a drugstore uh, sorry uh, a pharmacy it was more common to call it a drugstore but nowadays, you can refer to it as a pharma, uh, pharmacy, and you're going to be good to go. Um, but yeah, a drugstore is basically the same thing as a pharmacy. Okay. Then we have a post office. A post office. Oh, and just as a matter of fact, I think that um, drugstore is still used in Spanish in some regions. I think in Colombia, they still call it, you know, the version of, or the translation of drugstore in Spanish, que es la drogaría. Creo que en Colombia hay partes en donde todavía le llaman así. Bastante extraño, ¿verdad? Pero bueno, creo que, creo que todavía sucede. Muy bien. Um, so, a post office. A post office, that name is still, you know, in use. It is still very common. A post office is simply a place where you can go um, to receive or send um, your correspondence or your um, 
you know, your packages, your letters. So yeah, a post office. Then we have a gas station. That's another of the things that has become a staple in basically every city because, well, most of our mobility nowadays depends on gas. So that is why it is very common to see gas stations here and there. And with the amount of cars that we have nowadays in our country, it is also a huge requirement, you know, to have a, a gas station. Then we have a restaurant, a restaurant, a place where, you know, you can go to enjoy a nice meal. And of course, a restaurant offers many benefits, which uh, from which we can take the one that is the most ideal to me the is living a different experience you know when you are uh, when you are at a restaurant you are eating different kinds of food and you're also experiencing um something different when it comes to the to the whole food experience okay then we have a bookstore aquí hay una diferencia entre una library y una bookstore sí Muchas, bueno, al menos en mi caso me pasaba mucho antes que yo creía que una library es lo mismo que en español, ¿verdad? Una librería. Y pues que en ese lugar yo puedo comprar eh, artículos relacionados con los libros y con el estudio. Sí, en una librería. Pero no, en Estados Unidos, en inglés más bien, no en Estados Unidos, en inglés. A uh, library is um, basically the same as a biblioteca. Sí, en a bookstore is going to be the uh, well the version of a librería so yeah bookstores many people don't know and many people get confused because it is called a bookstore um that it's basically the same as as a as a librería and uh, yeah don't just be called up because of the name no solo venden libros también venden artículos relacionados al estudio así que es algo que también a algunas personas les pasa verdad que creen que solo porque se llama bookstore solo van a vender libros no a bookstore is Basically the same thing as a librería. And as I said, a library is very, very similar to a biblioteca. Or it's basically the version of the biblioteca. Okay. Then we have a department store. When we talk about department stores, the reason why they're called department stores is because they are divided in, well, as the name suggests, departments. Okay. So they have different spaces or different regions in the store where they sell things that are specific to that um, part of maybe the house or part of life. So as an example, a department store, the biggest department store or the most known department store in our country is Siman. Okay, so they have a, a place where they sell sports outwear. They have a place where they, they sell uh, women's outfits. They have a place where they sell uh, men's outfits. So, you know, they have different divisions in the in the store and that is why they're going to be referred to as a department store. Entonces, bastante sencillo, ¿verdad? Las tiendas departamentales es simplemente porque están divididas, no es porque hay una por departamento. Nah, just kidding. Bueno, entonces, por otro lado tenemos um, a supermarket. Supermarket, very common, very well known and uh, once again, it's basically everywhere. So yeah, when we talk about the supermarket, we're talking about a place where we can go to get food, a place, a place where we can go um, to buy, well, regular supplies. So yeah, a supermarket, it's very easy to identify, very common to, to see uh, basically everywhere. So um, also, it is very well um, resembled in Spanish con supermercado, so it's it's very easy to understand what it means as well. So, I would like to hear now. Do you guys have any doubts? ¿Tienen alguna duda acerca de algún lugar que pueda haber? O sea, lugares comunes, ¿verdad? ¿Y cómo se llaman? Ayer ya les mencionaba lo de la tienda. O sea, cuando hablamos acerca de tienditas, como la tienda de la esquina, tiendas pequeñas, esas normalmente se van a conocer como convenience stores. Pero no sé si hay algún otro lugar que les gustaría saber cómo, um, cómo lo vamos a referir a él. Yo pensé que de cuál esto podría ser un mercocentro. No, ese sería el mall. Sí, ese sería el mall. El department store es más directamente así como Simán. O sea, una tienda okay. donde las, las cosas que ellos venden están divididas, ¿verdad? Como por secciones, dependiendo de cómo a qué se refiere. Ese es un, más un department store. Ok, thank you. Uh -huh.
acá pues es el único ejemplo que yo conozco así como bien, bien, bien común. Eh, en Estados Unidos hay varios, hay varios lugares que son conocidos así como department stores, pero acá siento yo que Simán es como el más fácil, ¿verdad? De poder entender a qué se refiere el término. Bueno, ¿alguna otra duda? ¿Algún otro eh, lugar o cosa que les gustaría saber cómo se diga referido, claro, a los lugares que pueden haber en una... Uh... Ok, ya, yeah, Prisma Moda. Bueno, well, Prisma Moda desapareció hace mucho tiempo donde vivo. O sea, aquí cerca ya hace mucho tiempo lo eliminaron, pero es cierto. Recuerdo cuando yo estaba pequeño, había un Prisma Moda en Surután y cierto, también funciona, ¿verdad? Con la misma eh, como idea. Bueno, creo que el tiempo nos dio hasta acá. Sí, creo que ya básicamente... Eh, hemos acabado por la semana nos veremos entonces hasta el próximo lunes all I have to do now is basically just thank you guys very much for your attention and the participation you have had in tonight's class I hope you have an amazing weekend I hope you can get to rest and yeah, see you next Monday and take see care you next thank you, see you Monday bye, bye.